Well, a very warm welcome to everyone this morning. My name is Bob White. I'm a member of this uh, congregation and I'll be leading the service today. Well, you're very welcome, whether you're joining us on Zoom from home or maybe catching up later on YouTube, whether you're a regular or just a visitor, welcome. Uh, today's service has children staying in and we really don't mind how much noise they make during the service especially if you ensure that your microphone is muted. Well, we're going to start today with a song of praise. Come people of the risen King who delight to bring him praise. And as a reminder in this hymn that we are joined by a multitude of other people all around the world today. Come young and old from every land, men and women of the faith. So let's praise God in this first hymn. We come next to a confession. We say this week by week, and it's to say sorry to God for the things we've done that hurt him. And even if it's something that's been unkind to somebody else, actually, that hurts God. So that is what we're saying sorry for today. And we're going to say sorry for things we've done wrong, the deeds we've done wrong, which might be um, being hurtful, stealing things and so on in the extreme, but also for 
words we've said that are hurtful and unkind, and even thoughts we've had, if we indulge them, that are unkind and hurtful to other people and therefore to God. So let's just pause for a moment and then we'll say together the words on the screen of the confession. So please join me at home if you'd like to do this. So we say together, Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life, to the glory of your name. Amen. Well, there's many places in the Bible uh, which confirm to us that God hears our confession and forgives us. And I'm going to read the Collect for Lent, which reassures us that God forgives us when we say sorry. Almighty and everlasting God, you hate nothing that you have made and forgive the sins of all those who are penitent. Create and make in us new and contrite hearts that we, worthily lamenting our sins and acknowledging our wretchedness, may receive from you the God of all mercy, perfect remission and forgiveness. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Amen. Well, we're going to say together now the creed, which is a summary of the main points that Christians believe. And the words will come up, I'll introduce it, and then please, at home or wherever you are, please join me and say these words with me if these are truly your beliefs also. So let us affirm our faith in Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Though he was divine, he did not cling to equality with God, but made himself nothing, taking the form of a slave. He was born in human likeness. He humbled himself and was obedient to death, even death on a cross. Therefore, God has raised him on high and given him the name of every name, that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow and every voice proclaim that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Amen. Well, our next song is a children's song. It has actions. So if you're at home, you might want to stand up and spread out a bit. Uh, so there's room for that. Uh, and we'll be led in the song by what the actions are as well. It's called Who's the King of the Jungle? And actually, it is just picking up one bit of that creed that God is sovereign, he's above all things. Uh, and it's perhaps a little bit easier to remember because who is the king of the universe? Well, it's J-E-S-U-S. So let's sing this song together now. I'm going to put my Jungle Explorer's hat on. We're going to do some actions for this children's song. So I think you know them. So let's give it a go. Just follow me. Who's the king of the jungle? Who's the king of the sea? Who's the king of the universe? And who's the king of me? I tell you, the jungle and the sea. Who's the king of the jungle? Who's the king of the sea? Who's the king of the universe? And who's the king of me? I tell you, J-S-U-S is. He's the king of me. He's the king of 
the universe, the jungle and the sea. Who's the king of the jungle? Who's the king of the sea? Who's the king of the universe and who's the king of me? I tell you, J-S-U-S is, he's the king of me. He's the king of the universe, the jungle and the sea. Thanks. Great actions. Well, if you've sat down again after that action song that reminds us that Jesus is the king of the universe, we're going to turn now to prayer, uh, to pray to Jesus and our Heavenly Father. And the prayers are going to be led today by Monica Craig. Isn't it amazing that the king of the jungle and of the sea and of the entire universe invites us to talk to him? So let's pray, and you can join in at home with a loud Amen at the end of each section. Heavenly Father, King of the universe, we thank you and praise you for the wonders of your creation. We thank you for sunshine and for sunsets, for rain that waters the ground and for flowers that grow up from it. We thank you for plants and animals that give us food and for bird songs announcing the coming of spring. But most of all, we thank you for sending Jesus. Thank you that he lived and died and rose again so that we can be part of your family. Thank you for your Holy Spirit who is with us now. And thank you that Jesus will return one day and make all things right. In his mighty name we pray, Amen. Heavenly Father, King of the universe, we pray for all the people around the world who wake up to the threat of violence and hunger every day. Please, would you put leaders with wisdom and integrity in positions of power and help your church around the world to live out your call to love our neighbors. We pray that you would be made known in every nation and that your family would grow throughout the earth. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Heavenly Father, King of the universe, we pray for our country as it carries on through this pandemic. We pray for teachers and students returning to schools this week, that you would ease any anxieties and help this to be a positive step for children's education and well-being. We pray for the budget that has been announced, that it would help to support people's needs, and we pray for your wisdom in addressing the country's debt so that the gaps between the rich and the poor would not grow wider and wider. Above all, we pray for a hunger for you and your ways to grow in this land, and for people to turn to you as their only true hope in life and death. In Jesus' name we pray, Amen. Heavenly Father, King of the Universe, we pray for our external mission partner, Anchor Church in Limington. We pray for Christopher Henderson, that you would give him and his team patience while they meet online and the building they had been using won't allow them to meet in person. Please, would you make the way for them safely to meet in person again soon? We thank you for Rachel Henderson and another member of the church going through Christianity Explored over Zoom with someone from the wider community and pray that they would come to know you and choose to join their church. We ask that you would help the church to start a TOTS group in Pennington this year and that they would be able to share the gospel to the community through that. We pray too that the financial giving at Anchor Church would grow and that a house would be bought for them so that the church can feel well-rooted in the community for many years to come. For your glory we pray and ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Heavenly Father, 
King of the universe. We thank you that you know us and you love us. Thank you that you know the cares and concerns, the hopes and the fears of every person watching this service right now. We take a quiet moment now to bring to you any people or situations, especially on our minds. Father, by your spirit, would you give comfort and healing where it is needed? Would you give each of us the grace and strength we need for each day? And would you help us all to grow in our love for and trust in you? In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And finally, let's pray together using the words that Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Now one person we prayed for a lot in the last year is Daphne Peck, and I had the joy of sitting down with her over Zoom last week to hear about what God has done in her life, inviting her to share that with the rest of the church family. I was really encouraged by talking to her, and I trust you will be too to hear what she has to say. Okay, it's lovely to see you, Daphne. Could you share with us about how you became a Christian? Yes, um, there was some really nice, a nice couple that came to the village. This was in 1964, I think. And um, they were going from house to house sharing God's word. And I, at that time, I was, you know, maybe going through a tough period. And... Um, it was so nice. It was so lovely. And I remember then giving my life to the Lord then. Um, and then it was then, just after, that I started to go to All Saints um, in 1965, I think it was, during that year. And uh, I think I went for a year. And I was thinking that I wasn't good enough to go to church because only really good people went to church. And I felt guilty and I thought, this, I can't do this. So I stopped going. And uh, awful. then for years, I would describe myself as being in the wilderness. Um, yeah, and that was for quite a few years. And then I think it would have, when I was about 49, I think, um, I remember one day sitting on the sofa and thinking to myself, life has got easier, but there's this emptiness, an emptiness that I couldn't explain. And it was like, uh, to describe it was like a hole mm. that couldn't be filled no matter how much I tried. And then I was friendly with a lady that um, was uh, into the occult, which I didn't understand at the time what that was all about. And she kept asking me to go and um, join her and her friends to, for these seances. And I said, no, it's wrong. I, I don't want to come. And she kept on. And I guess not being a very strong person, I said, all right, then I will come. But I'm not joining in with you. And so I went. But as we know, the devil is very cunning. And, and I eventually did join in, which was a big, big mistake. And it was from there that things got worse. And uh, eventually I ended up in Fullborn Psychiatric uh, Hospital, uh, which also was a very hard time. It was horrendous what I went through. And I just want to say that that area is so dangerous, so, so dangerous. 
but anyway, it was while I was in Bourbon Hospital that one night I was so desperate and I remember just crying out to God and saying, please, Lord, please don't forsake me. And I don't know why I said that, because it's not something I would use that word forsake, but that is what I remember saying. And the next day when I woke up, I thought, oh, my head's lighter. That heavy oppressiveness is gone. And I just felt, I can't explain it. And I didn't understand at the time, but I just felt different. I knew God had answered that call of, of help. I just knew it. And um, I just felt so much lighter in my head because the devil had been really tormenting me. Anyway, I remember that day, it was a Sunday and I hadn't been eating, I couldn't eat. And I was just so thin and lost a lot of weight anyway. I remember I gradually began to eat again and get stronger and uh, I was there six weeks and then they said I could go home because my family they said I had a good family that would take care of me so that was that episode and then after a while I thought I want to go back to church mm. I, I just want to go back to church I want I you know about because in in going into, uh, into the occult, I thought that was where I was going to find God. I truly did think I would find God. And that was what it was all about. But of course, it wasn't. And um, I think it wasn't my faith in Esther God, but his to me. At that time, uh, my sister-in-law, who's a Christian, she told me about a church in Saffron Walden. So I went there and it was a good church. And I learned an awful lot. And then I think, I can't remember how long I was there, but um, then that closed. And uh, I was, I guess then I think I was about 51 or something like that. And then I was with Joan, dear Joan, that used to come to church, uh, Joan Cummins. So we were looking for a church. And first of all, we went to the free church in Great Shelford, but it was closed. And I always remember it was a really terrible night. The rain was just pelting down. And on the way back, I was going to take Joan home. And then we went by, just going by All Saints. And I said, oh, look, there's a light on there. Shall we go there? And uh, she said, yes. So <laughs> this was half six in the evening. And we, 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 we walked in. And uh, just that, that, that's it. And so I've been there ever since. And we were made so welcome. That was a wonderful thing. We really felt that we, you know, we would belong there and that God had sent us there. Wow. So that's when it sort of went back. Yeah. As I say, and been there ever since. So yeah. I think that was 2000 and, 2002 or 2003. Yeah, so yeah, wow. so you know, we've never looked back, and everyone has been so wonderful, you know. And I, I'm so grateful because I was, I had these inferior complex, you know, yeah. and no confidence. And but God took took me there, and I think to just show me that you know we are all equal in His sight. We, you know, we all we've not all been able to perhaps, um, you know, succeed in life. Whereas I did struggle very much at school, found it very hard to understand things. And, but the Lord gave me other gifts. So, mm. you know, and this last year was, as you know, a very tough time. But the love that I felt from the people, um, sorry, all saints, um, they're just tremendous. And I'm so grateful. I had some wonderful cards and with such comforting words. But I, you know, I'm sorry, Monica. It, it was emotional because it wasn't what I went through, it was the love of the people from all saints that love that you all showed me it, it, it's very you know it, 
makes me emotional because I've never felt that before, like never felt so accepted as I am at All Saints. Um, yeah, and I'm just so glad that God led me there. And yeah. dear Joan, who's now with the Lord, you know, and, uh, yeah, I, I never, I've never looked back. And I just want to say thank you to everyone for being so, so kind to me. And I'm just looking forward to the time where we can get together again. And I miss my hugs. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I miss my hugs. Yeah. I, I guess I'm a happy person, but, uh, you know, we have a wonderful God. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. So, and here I am, and looking forward to the day, day when we can go back to church again. Mm -hmm. well, yeah. Thank you so much for sharing all of that with us, Daphne. Uh, sorry, we do sorry, love you, and we are so grateful to have you in the church. <laughs> and well, I'm, I'm so grateful to be there. It's you know, <laughs> yeah. Oh, bless you, bless you all. <laughs> Do you want to share a, a Bible verse or two that oh, I have, like, yes, I'm encouraging you with? Or? Yes, yes, I have got um, one that really, really spoke to me when I was in hospital. When I was going down for the operation, I was reading my daily reading. And it was just, when I started reading, it was just the Lord was speaking to me yeah. personally. And... Uh, what he said was through through the scripture, which is Isaiah 41.10, as I, I'm sure you all know it, but fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. Yes, I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. And he did. And he is our rock, isn't he? And he's there when we need him. And that was just so poignant. I, it was, wow, you know. And when things got really tough, I just clung to that, that scripture. And it's got me through a lot. And the hymn that really uh, speaks to me is Amazing Grace. That is just a wonderful hymn. It is, and that speaks volumes into my life. Yeah. Whereas I was lost but now I'm found, was blind, but now I see. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Amen. Well, thank you, Daphne, very much for that testimony of your Christian life. We're going to sing another song now. It's called, When I Was Lost, You Came and Rescued Me. And that, of course, is the heart of the Christian gospel, that God reached down and rescued us when we were far from him. And a bit further on, it goes on to say, now I have come into your family, which again, of course, is the heart of the Christian gospel, that if you believe in Christ, you are now one of his children and you're in his family. So we'll sing this song together in just a moment. And then after that, John Greaves is going to come and read a passage from the Bible. And Simon Scott is going to teach us from that passage.
from Mark chapter 10, starting at verse 1. Jesus then left that place and went into the region of Judea and across the Jordan. Again, crowds of people came to him, and as was his custom, he taught them. Some Pharisees came and tested him by asking, Is it lawful for a man to divorce his wife? What did Moses command you? he replied. They said, Moses permitted a man to write a certificate of divorce and send her away. It was because your hearts were hard that Moses wrote you this law, Jesus replied. But at the beginning of creation, God made them male and female. And for this reason, a man will leave his father and mother and be united to his wife. And the two will become one flesh, so they're no longer two, but one flesh. Therefore, what God has joined together, let no one separate. When they were in the house again, the disciples asked Jesus about this. He answered, Anyone who divorces his wife and marries another woman commits adultery against her. And if she divorces her husband and marries another man, she commits adultery. People were bringing little children to Jesus for him to place his hands on them, but the disciples rebuked them. When Jesus saw this, he was indignant. He said to them, let the little children come to me. Do not hinder them, for the kingdom of God belongs to such as these. Truly I tell you, anyone who will not receive the kingdom of God like a little child will never enter it. And he took the children in his arms and placed his hands on them and blessed them. Thank you, John, very much for reading to us. It's great to have you do that. I'm going to try and sneak in a couple of church family news items before we get underway for our regulars, um, looking at the Bible passage a little more. First to say that on Monday the church council will be meeting and we'd love you to pray for us as we have our meeting on Monday evening. Home groups are underway again after a prayer meeting last week. We get underway again Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday this coming week with a slightly new series looking at how we share the good news of Jesus with our friends, a few interviews and some discussion time after those. Um, the men had something this week. Uh, on Friday evening, I'd come across an excellent little article, a blog post on why is friendship hard for men? Don't all laugh as I tell you about that. It's a serious issue and some excellent practical answers and biblical answers in that article. I would love for the men to join me on Friday evening, just for an hour or so. Don't even worry if you haven't managed to read that. I've given the link in the notice sheet for you to find that. Um, but if you haven't managed to read it, the exercise of meeting and talking to each other will hopefully be part of the answer to that uh, topic. So please, eight o'clock on Friday, men, join us for that. There's a Zoom link. You can uh, make that meeting and you can download that blog post. Next Sunday is Mothering Sunday, um, and even without an in-person service in the building, I'm sure we can mark the day and make it special. I've got three suggestions for you. You'll see them in the notice sheet if you want a refresher. For those in the village of Little Shelford itself who are maybe isolated and feel the uh, lack of a flower coming to them in church, uh, we're hoping that a team will be able to distribute flowers with a card from All Saints Church family and please let the office know if you can help or if you are aware of somebody who would particularly appreciate one of those flowers. That's the first thing. Uh, secondly, a craft activity. I think Josh is going to say a bit more about that to make a Mothering Sunday card during the week in time for posting or, or giving in person. Okay, good morning, everybody. We've got a really quick craft for you this morning, uh, and it's really important that you don't tell your mum about this because we're going to make a Mother's Day card, okay? It's a challenge for you, 
and the rest of your family to make your mum a lovely Mother's Day card. Now, it doesn't just have to be for your mum. You could make it for somebody who you love, somebody who's acted like a mother for you, somebody who cares for you, and somebody who looks after you. You can basically do whatever you want. Let me show you what I'm going to do, okay? I've got a nice blue piece of card here. I'm going to fold that little bit of card in half. So good so far. Then what I'm gonna do, I'm going to get some glue, get my Pritt stick, open it up, make sure it's a good one. I'm gonna put a bit of glue in the middle there. Then I'm gonna get my favorite thing of all, and that is some glitter, and I'm going to put some glitter on top of my card. Well done, and don't forget to shake that glitter off. You might wanna get some parents help with this. Shake that glitter off, lovely, there we go. And then what I'm gonna do on top of the glitter, I'm gonna put a little bit of glue on this little pink heart that I have just cut out. And I'm just gonna stick it on top of the glitter like that, so we get some glitter shining behind it. And then I'm gonna grab a marker from here and I'm going to draw a little line down. I'm gonna put like a little tie as if this is a little balloon. I'm gonna put that marker away and I'm gonna grab another marker, maybe a nice dark blue and I'm going to write on the front of it. And then whenever you've done the front, you can open it up inside and you can write a little message in there to your mum. You could write something like, uh, to mum, I'll send this to my mum. And if you do manage to make a little Mother's Day card for your mum, why don't you send us a little picture of it and show us what you have done. There's my Mother's Day card. I'm sure you can do a much better job than what I have done here. Have lots of fun making your card. And third idea is this, a video for the service itself, which we hope might go up onto the website afterwards. So it's worth me saying clearly as I can at the start, if you send in a video recording, uh, that is deemed to be consent for that to be shown uh, publicly um, and uh, on the website. What we're saying is this, could you send a 30 second maximum video by Wednesday to Josh Cairns to say what Mothering Sunday means to you, um, mentioning some, someone you are thankful for. And remember the videos work best in landscape format. Everybody's welcome to contribute, young or old, but if you send in a video, as I say, please consider that as consent for that video to be shared online as part of the service or on the website. And a number of people want to know how we're beginning to handle the uh, gradual easing out of lockdown. And I'm going to be in touch after the church council meeting on Monday that I mentioned with fuller details to church members. Whatever the outcome of those discussions, uh, please hear me and, and, and uh, let me be absolutely clear. The plan is to keep the online and Zoom options available for the foreseeable future. Uh, you'll be aware, regulars, that to this we have already added the option to book in on Wednesdays for the uh, Sunday services at six o'clock each week. That started last Sunday. And the other thing that we're hoping to do is that on Easter Sunday, the 4th of April, it's still awaiting final confirmation. We're hoping to offer, subject again to pre-booking, two similar morning services. We'll run the same times as we did before. Two services uh, that we hope therefore can accommodate the numbers that might want to come at 9.30 and 11 o'clock in the church building uh, with one of those services filmed and obviously made available online to those that want to uh, be part of the service that way as well as a communion service at six o'clock that evening as well. 
uh, obviously subject to confirmation and I'll be in touch with those details. Now let's pray as we turn again to God's word. Father in heaven, we thank you that you are a God who speaks to us and we pray for the ears to hear your voice to us this morning. In Jesus' name, amen. Now today's sermon is meant to be shorter than usual and I'm not aiming therefore to cover all of the Bible passage which was read in detail. If there are bits I leave out, please get in touch with questions, grown-ups, if you want to talk about them more. Um, I'm actually even going to cheat and steal a verse from next week's Bible verse, Bible passage, which I think applies to what we had read today. It's from Mark chapter 10, verse 31, later in the chapter, where Jesus says, but many who are first will be last, and the last first. Now, I thought the wall chart we saw last week was completely brilliant. Do you remember it? Here it is on the screen. So in that family, everyone who put someone else first moved forward a space towards the finishing line when they put somebody ahead of themselves and let them come first. Only did you spot what it said when the winner got to the finishing line? Have a look at this picture. There's the finishing line. And what's it say at the top of it? Last. Because they are the ones who get the prize. The ones who, by putting other people first, by letting other people get ahead, actually come last. They're the winners. How about that for an idea for sports day? I don't think many schools do it like that. I hope we have sports day this year, but I'm sure that in the uh, tennis racket and beanbag race, they don't make the person who won it actually come last. And they don't at the prize giving say to the person who could hardly get started, whose beanbag fell off the tennis racket. They don't say to that person, you're the winner, hooray. If ever that happens at a sports day, I promise I will go in for the dad's race on that occasion. But you see, things are different in Jesus's family. If you only go forward in Jesus's family by putting other people ahead of you, of course, you might end up moving backwards. You might end up coming last. There's that joke. What is the slowest moving thing on planet Earth? Answer, two Christians trying to go through a door at the same time. Maybe we should say two British Christians, I don't know, but two Christians trying to go through the door at the same time. Nobody wants, after you, after you, please. And it's even slower. Now we've got social distancing. How hard it is, for example, with that food that we like, to say to somebody else, after you with the brownies. Or maybe it's a discussion and someone says something and you actually know better and you're right, you know that. How hard in that situation to let them have the last word, to let them win. It's really hard, isn't it? But Jesus says that he gives the prize to the one who's willing to come last. Many who are first will be last, and the last first. So in our reading this morning, the people you might think should win, like the Pharisees, everybody thought they were really special, and all it took was a few minutes talking with Jesus for him to show them that they were actually hard-hearted losers. Okay, who else might we think should come out as winners? Maybe the disciples, they spent all that time with Jesus. They're his best friends, best buddies. Well, did you notice as that reading was, was done, did you notice how Jesus shows them twice that they've still got lots to learn? They might be close to Jesus, but that's not to say they are any more special than anyone else. They must be careful that they aren't losers. So who does get the prizes in our reading today? 
not the Pharisees, not the disciples even. First prize today goes to mums. And I think probably we should add some dads in there as well. Let's say mums and dads. I know in the bit we had read, women were, were, women were being treated very badly by men, which I'm sorry to say still happens today. But what I find interesting is, is that Jesus actually talks about men and women, mums and dads. So he says in verse 9 that God's plan for marriage was always for one man and one woman to come together and to stay together. Verse 9 says, therefore, what God has joined together, let no one separate and I'm going to ask one of my assistants to give me some help filming something to make that point. It's a bit like sticking two bits of paper together. Somebody said it's a bit like when you stick two bits of paper together. So I've got my glue stick. I've got my chosen bits of paper to stick together. And of course, when you do this, Right, let's do for good measure let's do some glue on that side as well when you do that the two become one so god's plan from the beginning was for the two to become one like with that bit of paper a man and a woman to come together and to stay together as husband and wife and what happens if later on I try and tear what's been joined together apart to separate them? Well, you can see. It's a nasty tearing process, isn't it? I have to separate what's been joined together. And if we do that in marriage, no surprise how painful it is when two people who've been together have to come apart. Therefore, what God has joined together, Jesus says, let no one separate. Now, I know, and Jesus knows, that it doesn't always work out that way. And I personally don't think that divorce is the unforgivable sin. It doesn't mean that God is finished with you. So I want to say gently, parents who are listening, others who are listening, please send in the questions. You can text them into me. I'll put the number in a chat box at some point in the service. We can talk after the services, of course. I know that in the last year or so, marriages have been under great strain. And I want to encourage people, please talk to someone else. You're very welcome to talk to me, uh, to me and Susu, if you'd like to do that. And do so, please, preferably early on. But the goal must surely be for husbands and wives to put each other first, to let each other win in the sense of forgiving when we can um, what's done against us, to put each other first and to stay together. Practical tip, just quickly, just to throw it in. Uh, don't forget the cards for Mothering Sunday. Um, <laughs> don't do what I'm tempted to do and just sort of dismiss it as a bit of commercialism to boost the card shop sales. This is a lovely thing for Christians to capture, to show love, um, husbands I'm saying, to your wives, to the uh, mothers of your children if you have them. And don't worry fathers, your turn will come in June. Anyway, first prize in the first bit of the reading goes to mums and dads, those who are willing to be losers but actually end up the winners. Now, a lot of people are, are wanting to switch off at this point. Let me just add another first prize that Jesus mentions in that reading. First prize also goes, does it not, to boys and girls. Did you hear that bit where the disciples were saying, kids don't matter. Keep these ankle biters away from Jesus. He's much too important to bother with children. And verse 14, Jesus said to them, let the children come to me. Do not hinder them, for the kingdom of God belongs to such as these. 
And then verse 16, it says, he took them in his arms and blessed them, laying his hands on them. Let me tell you one of the things I've really missed in the last year or so that I'm looking forward to uh, having in church life again. I've missed young babies, young children, or adults for that matter, being baptized and marking their entry into the family of God visibly and publicly that way. I've really missed the thanksgivings we have sometimes when a child is born or becomes part of a family. And I tell you, one of the things that's made me most happy this last week is to have a couple of people phone up to say, please, can we have our child baptized or please, can we have a thanksgiving for our, our child as soon as we have the opportunity? Boys and girls, why don't you ask your parents if you've had a baptism or a thanksgiving today and just find out a bit about it. Seems to me it's a very important way of expressing what Jesus said is that children matter. First prize in one sense goes to boys and girls. He thinks they're important. Everybody puts them down in Jesus' day, say they come last, not important. Jesus says yeah, the first will be last and the last will be first. And I want to challenge us as a church again, challenge myself and ask the question, will we put children first in our church life and let them win, as it were? We have great needs in our children's work at the moment. So I'm hoping that uh, uh, as we have opportunity, people will be able to start helping us in the children's work and the teenage work who haven't been involved before. We certainly need it. And don't write yourself out of the picture. I think that everybody is far more qualified for this as part of a team than they think. We've all been children and we know how wonderful it is when someone older shows us we're important and reflects the way Jesus thinks about young people. So please get in touch if you can help in that way and help us as a church to put children first. First prize going to boys and girls. OK, it's time for me to finish up. What's the ground we've travelled over? We thought about who gets first prize in the kingdom. Mums and even dads uh, can get first prize. They can be prize winners. Boys and girls can be prize winners according to the verses we've looked at today. And it's just possible that somebody is feeling a bit left out. Maybe there's somebody watching who says, well, I'm not married. Um, I was a kid, but I'm not a kid anymore. Uh, maybe you are divorced. And that's a source of great pain for you. And of course, there are all sorts of other ways. We have in crowds and out crowds, winners and losers in the church. Somebody might take a look at us when we're back in the church building and say, oh, I don't fit in here. I'm obviously not going to be part of this kingdom. I'm not white. Uh, the skin colour issue. I'm not bright. They all look so clever. No, 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 no. I, God can't be interested in me. I'm last on the list. Or maybe you just feel like you've blown it in some way that means that God couldn't possibly bother with you. Well, I want to remind you who it was that was saying the words that we've been thinking about today. Because, yes, we said first prize goes to mums and dads, first prize goes to boys and girls. But actually, first, first, first prize in Jesus's kingdom goes, of course, to Jesus. Remember, he was the one who was willing to put himself last again and again and again, healing those who are unwell, teaching the disciples who were so slow to learn and never, ultimately, of course, going to the cross to die for our sins. He put you first in his mind. He came last because he loves you. And he rose again so that we're absolutely clear 
that he is king of the kingdom. The last is first. First, first prize goes to Jesus Christ. And the wonderful thing here is that he is willing to share that prize with you, with anyone and everyone who comes to him. So the first will be lost, many of them. But don't rule yourself out. Those who come last, like Jesus, because of Jesus, can be winners. Let's pray together. We pray, Heavenly Father, that in that topsy-turvy world of Jesus' kingdom, you'd help us to find our place. And we thank you today that Jesus has his place, first place, on the throne, having given up everything for us. We thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Simon, uh, for your teaching this morning. Well, we're coming near the end of our service now, and we're going to sing one last song. It's an old hymn, Father, hear the prayer we offer. And it's a very appropriate one to sing at the end of a service as we go out into the week, uh, because we're going to pray in this song uh, that he will be our strength in hours of weakness. And I guess that's something which we all need at the moment in these unusual circumstances. But most of all, the very last line, Saviour, be thou at our side. And what could we be better than that, that we walk with Jesus beside us through this coming week? So let's sing this song uh, together now. that brings us to the end of our service this morning. Uh, so I'm just going to say a final prayer before we finish. And I want to read a passage from an old writer. Helen and I, through Lent, have been reading some ancient writings uh, through the centuries. And of course, Christians in the past faced just the same sort of trials and troubles and joys as we do today. And so there's a lot of wisdom in their writing. So let me read you first a passage from James Janeway, who lived in the 17th century. This is what he wrote. 
we are not worthy to be your servants. How much less are we worthy to be your children and heirs and to become partakers of all those blessed liberties and privileges which you have settled upon us. But for your goodness' sake and according to your own heart, you have done all these great things for us. Well, it's old language, but of course the sentiment is the same. Uh, so as we finish, may the Lord bless us and keep us and the Lord make his face to shine upon us this coming week. Amen. Well, do please stay and chat with others. Uh, you can unmute your microphones and join in with others. Uh, do have a coffee if you'd like one. Uh, hopefully your kitchen is just next door. Uh, I'm afraid we can't bring one to you at the moment. So thank you very much for joining us this morning.